This brief video will focus on how to condition a fish. The very first thing you need to do is assess the condition of your new fish. Most fish purchased from a local fish shop with a short drive home should be in good shape. However, fish ordered online can sometimes experience delays with shipping or some other mishap occurs in transit. Being able to identify these problems and respond quickly to them can mean the difference between life and death for your fish. So ask yourself the following questions. 1. Has the fish been in transit longer than expected? 2. Is the bag water cloudy or stinky? Remember, ammonia smells like cat urine. 3. Has the bag been punctured or deflated? And finally, does the fish look to be in distress? If the answer to any of the above is yes, then giving the fish a 30-minute methylene blue bath is an excellent idea. Methylene blue is probably one of the best first response treatments for a sick or stressed fish. It can treat ammonia burn, abrasions, cuts, open wounds, and increase oxygen transport to a fish's cells. It has mild antiparasitic, antibacterial, and antifungal properties, and can possibly even detoxify a fish that has been exposed to cyanide poisoning. Such a simple, inexpensive treatment that is so often overlooked. I will provide a link in the comments section which will provide details on how to use methylene blue. Keep in mind that you will need to have clean salt water on hand in order to do a methylene blue bath. Sometimes you will receive damaged or weak fish that are neither ready for a quarantine or display tank environment. These fish need some TLC or preconditioning before they can tolerate medications in a quarantine tank or deal with aggression from your other fish in the display. While a bare bottom tank can work for this purpose, I have found that a more natural setting or even a frag tank is the better option. This observation tank doesn't have to be large or intricate. Both of the tanks shown on the screen are only 29 gallons with hang on back filters and cheap wave makers, and some sand and rock for the fish to hide and to provide biological filtration. This type of setup provides the fish with a place to chill and hide in a more natural environment. I also recommend utilizing some type of disease management, such as a UV sterilizer, just in case your new fish is harboring pathogens. This should keep any diseases in check until you are able to run the fish through a proper quarantine. Another option is to give any new fish either a formalin or hydrogen peroxide bath before it enters the conditioning tank. However, these chemicals are much harsher than methylene blue, so I only recommend them if your fish arrives in good shape. Fish compatibility is very important for both quarantine and observational purposes. Even if the fish you are mixing together should all get along in your large display tank, take into consideration that these same fish may not tolerate one another as well in a more cramped space. So it's very important to do research to ensure that your batch of fish will all get along in both quarantine and observation tanks. When fish fight, this adds stress on them on top of possibly inflicting physical damage to one another. Such a scenario would be counterproductive to conditioning your fish. If necessary, use a tank divider or acclimation box to separate fighting fish. This brings us to what is probably the most important aspect of conditioning fish. It's an ugly truth that sometimes the last meal your new fish had was before it got caught in the ocean, especially when ordering online. At least when you buy fish from a local fish shop, you can ask to see it eating before purchasing, and then make sure you leave the store with the same food you saw it eat. Sometimes it is challenging to get a new fish to eat. And this is where live foods and soaking fish food in garlic can be beneficial. Once the fish starts eating, I highly recommend power feeding it several times per day. This doesn't mean dumping in a bunch of food and polluting your tank, but offering small amounts throughout the day and provide nori on a daily basis for herbivores such as tangs and rabbit fish. This will mimic a fish's natural feeding habits as they are accustomed to grazing all day on a reef. What foods should you offer? In addition to live foods such as black worms and white worms, I strongly recommend seafood options such as clams, mussels, scallops, 
mice, shrimp, krill, perch, and whitefish, and fish eggs and frozen callinus for small mouth feeders, such as wrasses. These contain live bacteria, which fuels a fish's gut flora, which in turn enhances the natural immune system. You can up your game even more by incorporating vitamins, probiotics, and beta-glucan into the feed. This is all designed to restore your fish's health back to the state it was in before it got caught, and to help it recover from the ordeal it went through being shipped from one place to another. So, do you still need to quarantine and prophylactically medicate a fish that has been conditioned? If you are concerned with keeping diseases out of your display tank, then the answer is yes. While preconditioned fish are healthier, this doesn't necessarily mean that they are disease free. Indeed, a well conditioned fish has a stronger immune system and is less likely to show symptoms of a disease, especially if it happens to be an asymptomatic carrier. The good news is your preconditioned fish is much more likely to make it through quarantine successfully and tolerate any medications that you use. Many fish die in quarantine because they are in rough shape to begin with and really shouldn't be exposed to medications just yet. I think sometimes we forget that fish aren't always ready to be pushed through quarantine and treatments on our timetable. But as unique live organisms, sometimes special consideration is needed on a case by case basis. Thank you for watching this video. Hit subscribe to see more videos like this one and join us at humble.fish for all reef related discussion.